So Assalamualaikum again we are here with the last and the next topic of the right art cat that interpretation of the right art cat in the previous topic uh, we done with the how to do cat why to do cat what to see in cat so all these things how to get the pressure pressing and the oximetry on the cat now if we have taken all the data now we have done the cat and now we have a paper okay so this is the paper on which all these things on the information have been written now you have to interpret it that how uh, that uh, what is the problem with your patient uh, so if 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 uh, your examiner or in the exams someone asks you uh, while giving the value of all these things then you have to like uh, 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 diagnose the case while while looking at the data Okay, so number one, number one and the easiest ones are the shocks. If in the shock you have done the care to diagnose or to look that which type of the shock my patient is having. So what are the things in which you have to looking for? These are the four things. Number one is the mean arterial pressure. Number two, what is the mean arterial pressure? Obviously, uh, mean arterial pressure you will take through the invasive BP monitoring. And you have to calculate the cardiac output by the FIC and the thermodilution method. And I am not going into de to the details because you will confuse yourself. Just read. I would, uh, before starting all these things, I just want you, uh, uh, want you, I just want you to suggest you guys that please go once at least to through all uh, this the chapter of the right art cat from uh, uh, any good book like the pole brown world or any anyone but just go through once at least because uh, you you uh, yes i uh, uh, can make you guys understandable uh, all like i i can make you guys uh, uh, in a position that you would understand better the right art cat or any topic but for your knowledge for for the retaining of that knowledge you need to under uh, you need to read the book at least once okay so i would suggest again and again especially for the right art cat please go through the books at least once uh for this right art cat now come to the point that we have the uh, three types of the shocks number one is the cardiogenic hypovolemic and distributive mo most of the time so if you want to diagnose your patient that which type of the shock my patient is having you need to do the few things mean arterial pressure obviously the patient is in shock usually be monitored with the invasive vp uh, so monitoring so you have to check the map you know that shock means there would be a decreased map so map would be decreased in all these patients but the cardiac output would be decreased in cardiogenic shock in hypervolemic shock but not in the distributive shock why in the distributive shock there would be the high cardiac output failure there would be the high cardiac output but, but your patient would be the shock your patient would have the high cardiac output but still the, your patient would have what your patient would have the less mean arterial pressure your patient will not be maintaining the mean arterial pressure why because of the pooling of the blood in the periphery and the peripheral vasodilation that's it now that now come to the pulmonary capillary wage pressure as we discussed in our last lecture that if you are taking the pressures here that it is the indirect surrogate of the la pressure and the lv and diastolic pressures so this pulmonary capillary wage pressure would be higher in cardiogenic shock why because obviously your heart is failing if the lv is failed so what it will do, uh, what uh, uh, will be done with that lv your lv will be failed and it will give the pressure back pressure to the la and la is give, will give the pressure to the pulmonary capillary wave pressure and your pulmonary capillary wave pressure will be raised so in heart failure uh, in the cardiogenic shock especially in the cardiogenic shock the pulmonary capillary wave pressure will be higher the pulmonary capillary wave pressure will be higher in which in when and in which where then there there would be the cause of shock would be hard why because your heart is failed and it is giving the uh, raised lv uh, uh, and and diastolic pressure and it will give the raised la and the uh, raised pulmonary capillary wave pressure sorry i am repeating again and again just make you guys to understand in a, like and to keep 
remember all these things okay just to uh, make you guys more clear about the situation now the after this pulmonary capillary weight pressure now come to the uh, systemic uh, vascular resistance the systemic vascular resistance you know that when they are put the decrease mean arterial pressure body has response to constrict the arteries periphery at uh, on the peripheries why because when we will increase the systemic vascular resistance actually we will we, we will be increasing the blood pressure so body itself increases the systemic vascular resistance to increase the blood pressure of the body so in the cardiac shock because of the decrease output because of the decrease mean arterial pressure obviously the root the pulmonary capillary weight pressure will be increased but your body will do the systemic vascular resistance will be increased just to increase the blood pressure that is the re protective response of our body which further fails our heart so a vicious cycle starts and you uh, uh, ultimately your patient will die now the hypovolemic come to the hypovolemic in the hypovolemic obviously there would be the decreased cardiac output and that hypovolemia because of the blood loss this hypovolemia can be because of the dehydration that hypovolemia uh, can be because of the uh, because of anything which decreases the volume content of your body so decrease pulmonary capillary weight pressure yes this patient would not this patient would not have a pulmonary capillary weight pressure raise pulmonary so pulmonary capillary weight pressure decides that your patient is with the cardiogenic shock or your patient is with the non cardiogenic shock so if your patient has the raised pulmonary capillary weight pressure your patient is in the cardiogenic shock if your patient has the uh, uh, the the decrease or normal pulmonary capillary weight pressure it means your patient has not the cardiogenic shock you have to rule out the other causes and if your cardiac output decrease and the systemic vascular resistance is increased it means that body is growing the protective mechanism because of the decreased cardiac output body is increasing the systemic vascular resistance it means that your patient has the hypovolemic shock but if your cardiac output is decreased oh sorry your mean arterial pressure is decreased your map is decreased but your cardiac output is increased because of the pooling of the blood in the peripheries and this is systemic vascular resistance it decreases why because of the peripheral vasodilation the peripheral vasodilation causes the decrease the systemic vascular resistance in the septic or the distributive shock so it further also decrease the pulmonary capillary weight pressure or in this situation pulmonary capillary weight pressure can be normal so if the pulmonary capillary weight pressure is normal or decreased and so uh, and uh, uh, if, if 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 your patient has a pulmonary capillary weight pressure is decreased then you have to make the mind that your patient is not in the cardiac shock but if your patient has a raised pulmonary capillary weight pressure then you have to make your mind that your patient has the pulmonary capillary weight uh, a cardiac shock but if your patient now you have to further differentiate your patient from the hypovolemic and the distributive then you have to look for the cardiac output and svr if your svr is increased it means your patient has the hypovolemic shock with decreased pulmonary capillary weight pressure if your patient has the svr is decreased and pulmonary capillary weight pressure is also decreased but the cardiac output is increased in this condition cardiac output would be decreased why because as i told you because of the peripheral pooling the cardiac output would be increased but the map will not be maintained by the body but the svr is also decreased in this patient because of the peripheral pooling or the peripheral vasodilation so you will label it as a distributive shock in the distributive shock there they are the, these are sort of the shock of the anaphylactic shock septic shock so these all are the shocks which uh, comes under the domain of distributive shock so this is how you differentiate your patient from the non cardiogenic shock to the cardiogenic shock now we have to discuss about the few scenarios and then we'll move towards the shunt lesions or how we have to diagnose the shunt through on the oximetry or the step up oximetry on right heart cath okay now the clinical scenarios yeah, we we commonly see our patient with the acute mr non cardiac pulmonary edema pulmonary embolism tamponade cpc rv and the tr but we do not know how to interpret the right heart cath of those patients so it is very important in the acute mr as we discussed in our earlier lecture in our previous lecture that there would be a prominent v wave why prominent v wave because in acute uh, mr there would be the increased mr and this v waves would be on the pulmonary capillary weight pressure tracing that v waves should not be on the 
आर ए ट्रेसिंग और जेवीपी वाई बिकॉज आई टोल्ड यू दैट फॉर लुकिंग फॉर टू टू लुक दी एल ए यू हैव टू टेक दी पलमोनरी कैपरी वेज प्रेशर ट्रेसिंग बिकॉज पलमोनरी कैपरी वेज प्रेशर इज दी इनडायरेक्ट सरोगेट ऑफ दी एल ए सो इफ यू आर टेकिंग दी प्रेशर ऑफ एल ए इट मीन्स यू आर टेकिंग दी ट्रेसिंग इफ यू आर टेकिंग दी लाइक प्रेशर ट्रेसिंग of pulmonary capillary wage pressure it means you are taking the pressure testings of the la so if you are if you are having the large v waves on pcp pcwp tracing and or uh, the pcwp is increased it means your patient is acute mr why this pulmonary capillary wage pressure is increased in those patients because in la when there would be a increased pressure on lvdp and this uh, the regurgitant volume comes into the la so the la pressure will be increased and la transmits this pressure to the pulmonary capillary wage pressure into the pulmonary capillaries so it increases the pressure of pulmonary capillaries and it ultimately increases the pressure of uh, it uh, ultimately it increases the pulmonary venous pressure and causing the prominent v waves okay now comes to the non cardiac pulmonary edema as i told you whenever you want to see that heart left heart is involved or not involved you have to look for the pulmonary capillary wage pressure if your pulmonary capillary wage pressure is raised it means your patient has your the left heart of your patient is involved if the pulmonary capillary wage pressure is normal or decrease it means your patient's left heart is not involved yeah this is the very basic and very important but in so many situations you would have pulmonary capillary wage pressure would be raised for suppose if your patient has diagnosed half rep and your patient is in the pulmonary edema as well as in the septic shock like mixed shock cardiogenic shock as well as with the septic shock so you might would have the raised pulmonary capillary wage pressure decrease svr and increase cardiac output but decrease mean, mean artery pressure so your patient would be like sort of a biryani or the khichdi so you would have the all the dynamics but for the exam point of view you need to understand all these importance and all the importance of all these values but in practical life you if you if you will go or see the uh, these right art uh, tracings you will get a lot of examples in which you will get the mix type of all these uh, hemodynamics like in the uh, your patient would be half rev but would having be less svr and increased cardiac output your patient is uh, would be in the uh, septic shock but your patient would have the increased pulmonary capillary wage pressure so these all are the examples of the mixed type of shocks now come to the point in the non cardiac pulmonary edema obviously there would be no or no, uh, less or normal pulmonary capillary wage pressure but the x ray would be uh, like uh, very bad and it would be decisive of of uh, like um, uh, or it will give you the clue of pulmonary edema back wing appearance or pulmonary waves or all these things now in the pulmonary embolism is very important there would be the decreased map because of the cardiogenic shock there would be decreased cardiac output but there would be the normal pulmonary capillary wage pressure so this sort of the pressure would be obstructive shock but you have to look for the increased increased pulmonary artery pressure why because if there would be obstruction here or obstruction here then the pressure would be raised here and there would be the normal pressure uh, sorry there uh, uh, there would be rv rv has also raised pressure ra has also raised pressure because rv has to pressure or rv has to generate more pressure to send the blood across the stenotic or obstructed area for so if there is any obstruction or if there is any thrombus which is obstructing the pulmonary artery or we can diagnose it as a pulmonary embolism so your rv will generate more pressure so rv will would, would be with in the like uh, rv would have the hypertension rv would have the raised pressures and their pulmonary artery pressures would be also higher but the pulmonary capillary wage pressure the normal which suggests that your patient has no left heart problem but the right heart problem so in and in, in the in the in the tamponade which is very important very 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 important in tamponade your patient would have your your patient would have uh 
equalization of the pressure in the diastole in the if you if you do the right heart cath in the patients of the cardiac tamponar so you will get the equalization of pressure in the all chambers in all four chambers so now you would ask me that how we would take the pressures of the all four chambers from the right heart cath in the diastole yes we can take you can take the direct pressure of ra rv and pulmonary if you take the pressure of pulmonary capillary wage pressure it will give you the information of la and lv dp lv and diastolic pressure so if the pulmonary capillary wage pressure ra and rv has the same value like <coughs> excuse me uh, due to the tamponade due to the tamponade there is increase ra pressure or like it is there is a 8 or 7 to 8 pressure and if you are taking the rv and diastolic pressure this is also 7 to 8 or you can say 8 and if you are taking the pulmonary capillary wage pressure it is also around 8 to 10 uh 8 or 9 8 or 9 so you can say that there is equalization of the pressure because pulmonary here pulmonary capillary wage pressure is showing the pressure of la and lv dp so Uh, uh so you can diagnose your patient on the basis of equalization of diastolic pressure uh, diastolic pressure uh, that your patient is in the cardiac tamponade so many times they give you this various values and they ask you about the diagnosis of the patient so many times in your previous papers if you if you look for that that so many times they have asked about this situation so just keep your mind open keep your vision open always look for the values and interpret it it is a very 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 uh, wise manner and very like in a with the with the, with, with 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 open minded uh, okay vision so now 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 come to the point that in tamponade you will get the diastolic equalization of the all four chambers and uh, i have uh, told you that how would you see the uh, equalization through right heart cath of the all four chambers now there would be uh, if you would see the J, uh, J, uh, jvp or uh, ra pressing then you will get the blunted y <coughs> uh, blunted y wave and prominent x wave why blunted y wave because of the rv collapse because of the rv and diastolic collapse the pre, the blood will not be going to the rv so you will get the blunt uh, v wave there would be there would be blunt y wave sorry there this would be like this so we there would be no this but there it would be like blunt v uh, y descent and you will get the a wave again so it shows that your patient is in the cardiac tamponade but your your patient would have prominent x descent like your patient would have this prominent x descent but no y descent so if i will give you this tracing then you have to diagnose it as a cardiac tamponade if your patient has prominent x descent but blunt y descent it means your patient is in the cardiac tamponade okay now come to the now come to the cpc uh, though we will discuss this constrictive pericarditis in our in our detailed lecture of constrictive pericardial diseases because i will make a very detailed and comprehensive video on the constrictive pericarditis why because constrictive pericarditis is the whole cardiology if you, if 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 you will be uh, succeeded and if you will be uh, become successful to understand the topic of pericardial diseases or especially the constrictive pericarditis in the cardiology it means you have become the good cardiologist it means you have become successful to be yourself uh, as a good or or uh, or a, uh, of like a, a good cardiologist okay now the right ventricular infarction same cpc and the rv has the same parameters but in the rv you will get the decreased cardiac output in cpc usually you will not get the decreased cardiac output rest of the parameters are same you will get the increase ra pressure obviously there if 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 there is a constriction here due to the constrictive pericarditis obviously you will get the because heart is in the cage in the calcified cage of pericardium now heart has very limited mobility and heart will has not the area to open uh, its 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 wings and heart has not area to contract proper 
properly or relaxes properly so there would be increased RA and increased pulmonary capillary wage pressure as well now you will ask me that why here is the pulmonary capillary wage pressure raised because this pericardium is not covering only our right heart this pericardium is also covering the le uh, left heart that's why you will get the increased pulmonary capillary wage pressure whenever there would be the involvement of the LV or LA you will get the raised pulmonary capillary wage pressure but if there would be your LA or LV will be free from the disease or there will be no problem with the LV and LA then you will usually you will not get the uh, raised pulmonary capillary wage pressure now an important thing is that the prominent Y descent why there is a prominent Y descent because your heart is relaxes so you will it is always remain active to get the blood from the RA when it gets blood then it relaxes and suddenly it ceases to take the blood why because your heart takes blood and it strikes the uh, ha uh, the border of the heart with pericardium and it will give you the pericardial knock truck why because of the because your heart has limited mobility limited space to to relaxes itself so when it takes blood it it walls it uh, while taking blood it wall uh, uh, strikes to the pericardium and gives you the pericardial knock truck and it will not take further blood from the RA uh, it uh, that's why you will get the prominent Y descent <coughs> prominent prominent Y descent on JVP okay okay now comes to the uh, come to the TR as TR and the MR are same but that you know that in TR you will get the prominent V waves on RA tracing and in MR you will get the prominent V waves on uh, LA tracing but here you will get the steep Y descent and blunt <coughs> steep Y descent and blunt X descent why blunt X descent because uh, when uh, when uh, um, RV contracts it gives blood to the RA and so it decreases the atrial relaxation and gives you the blunt X descent that's why because X descent shows the atrial relaxation it is very important now the important thing which I want to uh, know um, I I want you to know is the is the is the is the shunts the shunts are very important shunts are very 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 important okay uh, I just want to make a very bad diagram here of RA RV it's sort of this is I'm just making the I am I am just drawing a diagram of heart like if you look the heart from back from back side so let me make a good diagram of it just make you understand okay so So for oximetry, you have to look for the step up. How to assess the step up by drawing the blood from uh, like at every uh, location. Like uh, if you will, you are taking the pressure of RA and meanwhile you will take the blood from the RA and you will take the RV. You blood take from you take the blood from in inferior vena cava and uh, superior vena cava, pulmonary artery, and all these things. Now, if there would be the oximetry step up. Okay, of more than seven percent. Okay, such as if you are taking the blood of IVC, oh, sorry, SVC, IVC, RA, RV. Okay, if like you have taken the blood from SVC, it is seventy six percent. It is eighty three percent, and here it is the blood of eighty four percent. And here is the blood is 80, 
four percent. Now you will ask me that where is the shunt? So you have to check the oxy. You have to check the step up at the proximal part before the shunt. If you are looking for the intraatrial shunt, then you have to look for the step up. Where is the step up? Then you will appreciate that this there is a step up of between RA and SVC. Okay, so RA and the SVC shows the step up of around around six four and the four eight percent. So it means that your patient has intraatrial shunt, and that shunt is obviously the intraatrial shunt could be PFO or it could be ASD. Okay, so you will uh, you will write in the report of the right heart care that there is a step up of more than eight percent between the RA and the SVC. It means that my patient has patent foramina veil or at, uh, atrial septal defect. Okay, now the important thing you will ask me that why, Doctor Navi, there is the a step uh, of 83 percent in the inferior vena cava. Why? Because of the ASD, their pressure would be RA. Uh, the, the pressure of the RA would be increased, and that increased RA pressure sometimes uh, uh, sometimes gives flow back towards the inferior vena cava. That's why when you put a probe on the inferior uh, on the hepatic vein, you will get the or or the inferior vena cava. You you will you will get the non-collapsing inferior vena cava. Okay, and the distended hepatic vein, which shows that the uh, the pressures of the RA are increased because of the intraatrial shunt between the right atrium and the left atrium. So always, if you are looking for for the shunts, I would suggest you that uh, always look. For the oximetry between RA and the SVC, don't follow this IVC because most of the time this IVC gives you the false impression because you will confuse that if the 83% is there if 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 there is a 83% uh, 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 saturation in the inferior vena cava, but there is the uh, and 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 there is the 84% in the right atrium, so there is there is no step up. Why? Because Obviously, the blood is 83% coming from the body, so there is no step up. No, but there is a step a step up. Why? Because most of the time, because of the increased RA, the blood most of the time goes back into the system. This the, the uh, systemic uh, the the uh, the the uh, venous systemic <coughs> venous system. So that's why uh, it will give you the false impression. Number two, most of the time your blood takes most of the oxygen from the blood from the arterial blood that's why the venous blood which is coming from the superior vena cava most of the time has less oxygen saturation than the than the lower body your lower the blood coming through the inferior vena cava into the ra would have the more saturation than the in uh, the uh, the blood coming from the superior vena cava but uh, that is the reason they they put the number 7% uh, uh, to diagnose the Uh, shunt between the atrias or intraatrial shunts. Now come to the VSD. If your patient has VSD, then there would be the shunt. Then there would be the difference between uh, RA and the RV would be more than five percent. If your patient has eighty four percent, then your might your patient would have eighty nine percent saturation. And if you will uh, pulmonary artery, and if you will. Take the blood from the pulmonary artery. Your pulmonary artery has around 89 to 90 percent saturation. It shows that blood coming from uh, going from RV to uh, pulmonary artery has al already been uh, mixed with some uh, mixed with the some arterial blood at 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 upper level. Like if your patient has shunt uh, between the LV and RV, so there is a mixing of blood from LV. to rv so it is actually gives the mixed venous arterial saturation in the rv which causing the increased saturation in the rv and that is the same saturation now you will get in all the passage up to the lungs why because here the blood has been mixed because of shunt now the blood has been mixed because of shunt now you will get all the way that 89% saturation until it will be oxygenated in the lungs same is here if the blood has been oxygenated through shunt then obviously it ideally it should be 76% or 78% but now it has been mixed with la blood so now it has been mixed due to this shunt now so the ra 
has the mixed venous arterial blood rv would receive same pulmonary artery would receive same and it would remain same until it would be oxygenated in the lungs so you have to look for the step up between the area where it is where the shunt is present and you have to compare that area with the proximal to that that area like if you are looking for the vsd you have to uh, look the saturation in the ra if you are looking for the shunt in the intraatrial septum you have to look for the saturation in the superior vena cava or sometimes we do in the inferior vena cava if the superior vena cava value has not been given okay so it is very easy uh, to diagnose the shunt at uh, at the various levels but one more thing if your patient has pda then again there would be the shunt of around more than 5% between <coughs> pulmonary artery and the and the so if your patient has if your patient has like this is this is rv if the rv has 83% saturation and pulmonary artery has like around the sorry 93% and so if there is a shunt of more than 5% between rv and and pulmonary artery it means that there is a shunt in the pulmonary artery so you will diagnose it as a patent ductus arteriosus uh, arteriosus so there is a uh, there is a connection between aorta and the pulmonary artery which which will give the shunt which will giving the shunt uh, to in the pulmonary artery so it means the blood is mixed due to the shunt with blood of aorta and the pulmonary artery and so the 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 mixed venous arterial blood uh, giving you the saturation of 93% though the rv has only 83% saturation so the, in, uh, just keep uh, two things in your mind if there would be the more than 7% of the step up between atrial between uh, between atrials or the chamber proximal to the atria you will diagnose it as a intraatrial shunts and obviously intraatrial shunts are the patent foramina veil or uh, atrial septal defects nothing else if your patient has uh, like more than 5% of uh, step up between the uh, large vessels or in the chambers so you will diagnose it as a vsd or the pda now the important thing is in the normal person the qp and the qs the qp like the flow in the pulmonary vessels or flow in the system systemic vessels should be equal to 1 it means the blood which is coming to the my right heart it should be the same blood which should which will leave the left heart into the system so if the it means that the blood which is entering into the right heart should be equal to the blood which is leaving my blood from the left heart why because there is nothing to be pulled in the lungs or anywhere so blood amount should be equal but if the cupic us is 1.5 is to 1 it means that the 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 blood which has been received by my pulmonary vessels if it is 1.5 of the one uh, like like it is the 1.5 times of that blood which is leaving my heart it means there is some shunt which causes the back flow which causes the blood to stay in the heart so it means my pulmonary vessels are is receiving my pen pulmonary vessels are receiving more blood than my systemic vessels it means there is shunt and that 1.5 shows that my shunt is significant and it should be closed as soon as possible if it will not be corrected then it will cause what it will cause irreversible pulmonary hypertension and that irreversible pulmonary hypertension will cause what it will cause the eisenmenger syndrome and in that situation that shunt will be contraindicated to close why because in that situation your pulmonary vessels would be generating more than the pressure of your systemic uh vessels so uh, it it will be harmful if you will close that shunt 
during Asian Menger or during reversal. So I think I have myself clear because that topic is very, very, very difficult. I would again suggest you please go through once at least from any book, from any good book. Okay, so uh, you will uh, understand that topic better. Uh, I hope that uh, I have myself clear. My prayers are with you. Subscribe my channel. Share this knowledge with your friends as soon as possible. Uh, as much as possible. <laughs> I have become a bit crazy because of this hectic lectures. Okay, laugh is taken.